One. For the past nine years, I've been a bartender at a semi-classy and corporate-owned chain restaurant in my part of Ohio's suburbia. I have a lot of regular guests whose company I truly enjoy, and I do pretty well financially. I love my job, other than one douchebag assistant manager that's been with us a couple years. I could go on and on about why this manager Joe is a douchebag, but I'll try to be concise. Joe is a creeper who often tries to use his position as our scheduling manager to pursue female employees, including those under 18. Joe does not like me because, throughout his time being a creeper, I have called his behavior out to our general manager, Luke. Now, let's not get into why Joe still has a job, as anyone who's worked in a restaurant knows this type of thing rarely results in serious punishment. So, usually look reprimands Joe, and it all gets swept under the rug. I have worked the same schedule long before Joe was in the picture, so he hasn't been able to mess with it much. He has tried before, but Luke has told him not to change it. He knows how many regulars I've built up over the years. When Ohio had to close dining rooms in March, our restaurant's corporate said that the most senior employees could stay on as carryout. This includes me. Yet with Joe's newfound powers, I somehow ended up with three shifts, while the others, who were good at ass-kissing and under the rug sweeping, got five or six shifts. I report my tips correctly, so my state unemployment is about $400 weekly. This is all happening before the Federal Cares Act. I'm not making that in three shifts. Joe tells me that if I'm not grateful to still be working, I should just stay home and file unemployment like everyone else. I am annoyed as fuck because I could definitely make more than $400 if I had a fair schedule. But I don't want to bother Luke with this, as he's already dealing with a lot. I tell Joe that's exactly what I will do, and that's exactly what I did. I stayed home and filed unemployment. Well, Joe, the joke's on you. I have since talked to Luke and made sure I will have my old schedule back when we do reopen the dining room. And with the Federal Cares Act, I'm making what I made before the dining room closed down, sometimes more. I hope for now you're enjoying being in charge of your hand-picked dream team. Because when things get opened back up, I'll be back again. And I'll continue to make sure you don't completely get away with being a douchebag creeper. Until the day you finally screw up so bad, they have to fire you. I'll be there then too. And hopefully it's sooner rather than later. Two, I work in fast food, and we are considered an essential business by the province's health minister. We also have had zero to one new cases in over a week in my province, Ireland, so people are getting brave and leaving their houses more often for fast food. Given COVID-19, we, like most places, are working with less staff. I work open 6am to 2pm. Most days, and we get two or three people, sometimes an extra for lunch on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I work with my boyfriend, and this weekend we were asked to work 10 hours, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. Friday and Saturday we had extras, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then it got really busy for the afternoon when it was just us two. Today we worked 10 hours with no help, no break. Also, we have noticed an increase in assholes, and I find there is one memorable person per day. Today was no different. I'm me, BF is boyfriend, AH, asshole. Today we were receiving stock from our sister's store, owned by the same franchisee person. We share stock often. Boyfriend was helping the manager unload his car when a drive through order came in. Two double burgers, two poutines, BF asked me to make the order since he was still busy. I figured I should start it first before getting AH to pay, just to limit cross-contamination. As AH drives around the building, he almost hit my boyfriend with his huge-ass truck. When BF stopped suddenly to wave him along and let him pass, AH looked pissed. BF immediately told me what happened. I started making the poutines when I hear something from the drive through I think I just heard a honk. Fucking really? Asshole. Okay. I'll finish this and you go deal with him. I take off, pour his drinks, then finally answer the window. He even looks like an asshole. 
as I'm taking his cash, which we strongly recommend you don't use. BF says over the headset, I'm drowning these poutines in gravy, I hope they love it. Despite receiving stock, we are still out of a lot. We only have two sizes of takeout bags right now, mini, one item, and medium, three items. Two combos can fit into a medium bag, but it's squishy. Two poutines and two double burgers can't fit, but shouldn't. I did it anyways. I go to hand them their bag, when the bag splits open on the guy. I could tell it might split, as it was halfway out the window, so I kind of caught it. But at least one burger fell into his lap. He didn't seem too annoyed, I was expecting him to curse me out. And just said, I got it. Still trying to be a nice gal in customer service, I offered him more napkins and said, Have a good day. I was out to tell boyfriend what happened when I just burst out laughing. After he left, of course. Truth be told, I actually felt bad for dumping it on him, but he deserved it. Why did he deserve it? Well, he and his buddies sat in the parking lot staring at me the whole time they ate. Then A.H. got out of the car with the bag. I was expecting him to come and complain, but he was just walking up to the garbage bin by the building, or so I thought. After they left, I noticed the poutine box where they were parked, seagulls attacking. So I decided I'd clean up after them, and guess what? Asshole dumped his trash on the sidewalk next to the restaurant, two feet from the garbage can. 3. So this story takes place many years ago, back when I was in college and waiting tables at a chain restaurant known for their burgers, referred to by our staff as the Dirty Bird. This was years ago, early 2000s. The main characters, me, Angry Dad, AD, Cool Manager, CM. It was a busy shift, a Friday or Saturday right at the dinner rush, line out the door. A family was sat at one of the extra-large tables in my section. A.D., his wife, and a gaggle of kids. I went over and did the usual greetings and drink order stuff. A.D. was a little cranky, but otherwise content to be seated. They order food, I ring it in, and now we wait. Like I said, this was a busy night. Ticket times were probably close to 30 minutes. In the meantime, I was taking care of the other tables in my section. Every time I would walk by, he would stop and ask me where his food was. Did my best to explain we were busy, but his order would be out as soon as possible. Finally, after 20 to 30 minutes, the food comes out. I do my check-in, and of course AD complains about too much or not enough of something on his burger. It was like 15 years ago, I can't remember specifics. I apologize and let him know I'll have the kitchen remake it. A table had just been sat right next to him. I quickly greeted them and said I would be right back. They gave that understanding look. So I run to the kitchen and have the expo put in the red ticket replacement order, so it should be up in a matter of minutes. I then go back to take the order of the nice couple. Of course, AD glares at me my entire walk over. I inform him a fresh burger will be brought out shortly. I then turn to the right and take the other table's order. As they're telling me what they would like, why is my food taking so long? Apologies, sir. The kitchen is working on it. Angry Dad responds, I shouldn't have to wait. Again. Sorry, sir. Let me finish taking these people's order and I'll check the kitchen. Look here. He grabs my wrist. Now, dear listener, let me add in the detail that you, the Angry Dad, did not know. I've been training in martial arts for most of my life. At that point... At least 15 years. Do you know what happens when you train that long? Muscle memory. Between his grab and yelling along with my adrenaline, I lost a few seconds, but when I became aware again, I had AD in a wrist lock, face down in a basket of ketchup and fries on the table. All I could think was, oh shit, I'm gonna be fired. I released his arm and power walked into the back break area. A few deep breaths and I walked back to the floor to assess the damage. As I come around the corner, I see A.D. screaming at Cool Manager red in the face from anger and from the ketchup. And I want him fired. I'm calling the cops. My wife and kids saw him attack me and I'm pressing charges. I start to panic and back away slowly. Oh, we will absolutely call the cops, but you should be gone before they get here. What? Besides being belligerent and disrupting other guests, I saw you grab my employee. 
My staff saw you grab my employee. I'm sure we'll all love making statements to the cops about our co-worker defending himself. Angry Dad responds with utter silence. You need to leave now, and I don't want to see you here again. Angry Dad proceeds to collect his family and head for the door. The whole time, CM stands there glaring at him. As soon as they are at the door, CM bursts into laughter and turns to me. That was the coolest thing I've seen happen in any restaurant I've worked at. High five. So, dear reader, that's the story of the night I thought I was getting fired. Instead, I got some good tips. Made the boss laugh hysterically and gained a reputation of being badass by the kitchen staff. 4. So my restaurant is part of a big chain, which has many locations in the US and the UK. Though not surprisingly, we have a very strict allergy policy, because 1. We do not want to get anybody feeling unwell, sick or even worse. 2. Seeing as we have so many locations in the US and UK, which are so trigger happy with suing everything left and right, we simply cannot be too careful, because effing up an allergy can have health, legal, and PR disasters coupled with them. Once again, I cannot emphasize we have a super strict allergy policy. Our servers are not allowed to take orders, line chefs not allowed to make the dish. Everything made from scratch in a secluded area, in a specifically clean set of pots, pans, crockery, etc. And finally, the dish is also brought by the manager that took the order. Yes, every allergy is an extra hassle, which we lovingly do to assure everybody's health and safety. In return, we hope our guests understand that a dish with an allergy could take a smidgen longer. The Scenario Regular Full House Saturday Cues around the corner My colleague retrieves me to take an allergy order on a table with two ladies. I approach the table and see a, what I assume to be, pregnant lady and a middle-aged lady. I do my usual friendly introduction that I would be taking over the ordering and delivery of the table due to an allergy. Anything else would be the lovely section holder. Can you please tell me more about the allergy? I'm allergic to spicy, says the pregnant lady. Oh yeah, me too, says the middle-aged lady. Well, the dishes you have chosen are absolutely not spicy. However, what is the specific ingredient that can cause an allergic reaction? It could be present in smaller trace amounts. Just the spicy food. Peppers, such as chili peppers or bell peppers or wasabi, ginger, or... No, all that is right. Just allergic to spicy. Well, once again, the dishes are absolutely not spicy. And I can ensure that the chefs will be extra careful and attentive when I enter it as a special order. When it is a preference, choice, or intolerance, we will take your order very seriously. However, when it is an allergy, we have to go through an elaborate allergy procedure. It will take longer, and I will need to pinpoint the allergens to my chef. Anything spicy. All right, if you could specify which allergens, we will make sure your dish is free from it. Spicy. Raw onion, ginger, chili peppers. No, all of that is right, just spicy. It will absolutely be no problem to make these dishes free of anything spicy at all. The dishes are on their own, not spicy at all, with a special order, because it could be an intolerance or just a preference. The chefs will be incredibly careful in preparing the dishes. Just in case of an allergy, the dish has to be made from scratch, eliminating any possible allergens. Specific ingredients will also need to be pinpointed. Just spicy! Now make the food! Well, alright. I'll have these dishes made free from any allergen that could be interpreted as spicy. Please do keep in mind these dishes take a little bit longer to make than our usual times. Thank you! With a nice eye roll to her pregnant lady friend. I proceed to go to my head chef. I give him the specific instruction of omitting any ingredient that could lead to spiciness. I get a fabulous eyebrow raise. Sadly, this is not our first rodeo with odd or ludicrous allergens. But like always, we take our allergies and policy very seriously. He proceeds with his instructions. A little more than an hour later, the dishes are ready and I bring them to the table. The ladies are quite upset with the wait because people around them who came in later have almost finished their meals. I apologize for and reiterate the reason why allergy dishes have lengthy preparation times. Middle-aged lady and pregnant lady are visibly upset with me. I walk away and let the section holder know to take good care of them and that I will be MIA from her section unless she needs me. 
Sadly enough, 15 minutes later, I get called to the table again. They were unsatisfied and needed the manager. Middle-aged lady and pregnant lady complained to me, saying they thought their food was too bland, lacking flavors. They said it in such a way that you could see they wanted discounts or comps. Their plates were empty. I kindly informed them that, as was mentioned, any ingredient that could be interpreted as spicy was left out. Also, that I was very glad they could fill their bellies and still their hunger with such complex allergies in a safe and healthy way. They were not happy. My flying fucks had left the building a long time ago. I had a full house restaurant to run and an endless queue to manage. They paid full price, so of course no tip. I really cannot deal with this special snowflake allergy hype bullshit. Disturbs the flow of service, turnover times, delays the kitchen. More importantly, it also stalls the legit allergy orders. And sure, allergies are definitely a real thing and can make people terribly sick. But please, people, treat them as equally serious as we would. And don't play around just because you feel more important or special when you call it an allergy. 5. The more I work in the food industry, the more I hate people. Not an original title, but resonates deeply within me. I work at a place that are doing takeout only, and right when we opened, we get this phone call. This woman was complaining about how she was missing two things from her order from yesterday. We told her that we couldn't do anything because her problem was from yesterday, and asked her why she didn't call us yesterday to try and fix this problem. She didn't answer our question and continued to yell about her missing items and then hung up. The employee that happened to pack her order remembered putting the supposedly missing items in the bag before passing it to the customer. Alright, story finished, right? <laughs> no. This woman proceeds to order takeout again a couple of hours later, and talks about how she's regulars at the restaurant and never complains, and mentions the missing items incident to me again. I gave her the same answer. To clarify, it is restaurant protocol to repeat the orders back to the customer, and give them their price and ticket number to confirm we got their order right. So I did this. And the customer opened the bag to check everything to make sure we got it right. Sure, no problem. A lot of people do that. What seriously gets me is that 30 minutes later this woman calls us and screams at us for getting their order wrong. She kept screeching about how she got shrimp and would never order shrimp. And that she would always order crab. Like, lady. Seriously? We have your past orders in the system, but it's not my responsibility to look through your history, and I don't know if you suddenly wanted to change it up or something. I am responsible for the things you order with me at the time. So I told her about how I repeated the order, etc. She kept blaming and screaming at me, and I lost my shit. I admit I got a little upset and worked up. So I started saying stuff like I was offended, and said I would call the police. After that, she kept calling us back every time the phone would disconnect, and she would tell someone else to call us so we didn't recognize the phone number. Funny thing is, she was always the one to hang up. Oh my god, and she would keep screaming to talk to the manager when she had talked to them multiple times and got the same answer. After the phone calls, we realized that this lady is the one who comes in all the time and has problems with her food all the time and every time asks for a discount on her food. Seriously, today we had a lot of orders, so why is it that only she had a problem with her order? We have many protocols in place to ensure this exact thing doesn't happen. How would you guys deal with this lady if she calls back again? Now I just keep rerunning the incident over in my head and know that there was a better way to render her speechless. I keep regretting my response to her yelling and getting dragged in by her intense emotions. The only thing I didn't regret was making a police report against her because it was verbal abuse at that point. Hey everybody, Halfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Spinning Plates number 95. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. I'd like to say thank you very much to everybody, Dragonstar Fox and others, who have purchased some of the new merchandise I put up on the Hellfreezer Teespring merchandise store. 
Uh, we now have a selection of balls t-shirts. Uh, balls on tape is one of them. Uh, there's a few mugs and some other things as well. Uh, if there's something you're looking for, uh, if there is something you're looking for on the store, please do uh, let me know. Please do let me know, uh, and I can add it. Or if there's something with a design you want tweaked, I can certainly do that myself. Uh, yeah, I I'm open to ideas, and uh, these these ones I designed on stream. Like I was getting feedback from people, so that was helpful. And I did look around. There's there's other things I haven't actually put I haven't put designs on, like the snapbacks, you know, like caps. Uh, we called them caps when I was younger. Apparently, they're called snapbacks now. Uh, and uh, socks, and apparently gaiters. Um, can't imagine anyone would want a Hellfreezer gaiter, but they do exist. Or they exist to be designed. It's something they offer. Um, if, if I was to actually, you know, upload a design. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening. And take very good care of yourselves.